What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to Stocks by the Numbers. Wanted to do uh, another quick update here on a company that is also in the EV sector. We just looked at NEO earlier today, and I recall that this and also uh, PSNY were two other EV stocks that I said uh, did not have the revenue coming in, were overinflated, and we should stay away from. And as we see, of course, just like every other stock, was pumped up after stimulus money came in. And then, of course, we have not only the crater all the way down to a few dollars from those highs, but, of course, reverse splits for the company to try to maintain their listing on the NASDAQ here. So the symbol still on the NASDAQ, Mullen Automotive, ticker symbol M-U-L-N, stock right now $1.22, down $0.03, cents, about 2.4% on the day. As we see here, day range, bottom, $1.18, new 52-week low, $1.18. Now, obviously, there is some stuff going on here with the company. I know they recently got an order from, uh, yeah, here, Randy Marion Automotive in North Carolina. So they're sending a couple of vehicles their way. Uh, however, you know, you have headlines like this, Mullen delays five production to 2025. And, uh, you know, I, again, I still feel, you know, I'm glad they're, you know, ready to send someone vehicles and, and got a deal for a couple of million, but also at the end of the day, I mean, just the bleeding that they suffered. And even by the time that revenue comes in, it's still going to be, in my opinion, it's going to be like a drop in the bucket, man. So, you know, uh, I, I still say I wouldn't be a buyer here of Mullen. Um, I don't recall when I did the video on Mullen, I remember we went to the company website. And I don't want to do that again, but I just recall on the website, if you go back and watch that video, I think they said like they weren't even going to get into production until like the end of this year or maybe like halfway through next year. Or so that's why I said like you have time before you really have to, oh my God, you know, they're about to rock and roll. I got to step in. I got to grab some shares. Like you, you should not have that feeling at all right now. But what bothers me is that because this is a very cheap and popular EV stock. I'm assuming it's also on Reddit. I don't know. I don't keep up with those posts on Reddit. I, I, you know, regardless of any situations they have, again, I keep saying to everybody, the GameStop situation was an anomaly. So, you know, you they called it right on those forums and they were building up positions in GameStop and, and buying, you know, year to year out uh, calls, you know, just betting that the stock would explode. And they made millions of dollars off of all of you people who just jumped in and went along for the ride. Now, I'm sure a lot of people did make money, but again, that was an anomaly. If memory serves correct, I think GameStop had like 116% of the float was shorted or something like that. that. That's what I'm saying. And then what happens is now they basically just look for stocks with higher short interest and put those on the list. But like I said before in previous videos, you know, a, a lot of these companies have higher short interests for a reason, right? If the company sucks, if the if the revenue like consistently keeps decreasing or if they're like preempting earnings and yearly guidance, lowering it below previous expectations, right? They, these are all negative catalysts that are going to drive the price of the stock down. So, you know, sometimes a lot of these companies, they, they trade near lows or they have short interest and it might be for a specific reason. So you can't just jump into like a clove, right? Remember that one, C-L-O-V? Yeah, it was low. It had a little bit of pop. You know, I'm sure those people who had more to risk and were able to take a more sizable position and had more time to deal with the volatility as opposed to you guys did, I'm sure they made out like bandits and maybe made a couple of hundred percentage, you know, returns. But at the end of the day, that they ended up screwing over probably a lot of younger or just smaller individual investors that probably shouldn't have even taken that position to begin with. But this is what pisses me off because I brought up how it's, you know, a quote unquote popular meme stock or whatever it is. And then you have stuff like this. Oh, no, not this. This one. Look, a oh, Mullen stock alert yesterday. Mullen could short squeeze this week. What? Yeah, who cares? Who cares? Even if this stock now goes from $1.20 up to $1.75 and you miss out on 45, 50%, guess what? Everyone in their brother who got in is going to immediately take profits and anyone who sees it up is probably going to reshort it and it's going to fall back down to a dollar. The company also just did a reverse stock split, as I mentioned, one for 25. 
and as history has shown us, reverse stock splits really never work out. So, it, you know, it's just funny because I wanted to talk about this stock because, yeah, of course, you know, I could pat myself on the back and say I was right. And the stock started to decline, you know, week after week, month after month after we looked at it. But, you know, also, I, I just want to keep you guys sharp here because, again, remember, th this information, in my opinion, is basically like 90% of it is made to confuse you, chip away at your confidence and get you thinking, you know, we, we're looking at a stock like this and we see it's like a piece of crap right now. And then you read a headline like, oh, I could squeeze, short squeeze this week, right? And then someone's like, yeah, I'll throw a few hundred in, I'll throw a few thousand in. And it's like, you know, you throw in two, three grand and, you know, the stock should keep selling off and, and you know, it drops down to 90 cents. All of a sudden on three grand, you're down $750 because you bought a piece of crap that was inevitably going to drop down and you got swayed by some fancy headline. You know, I'm sure you guys can understand what I'm saying. So this is why always be sharp. You know, I'm glad they're, you know, keeping people in the loop here, talking about their factories and whatnot. Listen, it's all great. However, the company, again, reverse stock split and hitting new 52-week lows. Right now, they have a market cap, $185 million, losing $31.71 a share. I can appreciate the fact that people on Reddit, people in these forums are trying to make a play out of this stock. However, again, you, you can't force trades. Again, GameStop was an anomaly, so you force the trade onto them. But just a situation like this, just buying it because it's cheap or just buying it because, oh, one day it'll be higher, like you really, you really shouldn't invest like that. Because even if you turn out right and you turn around four or five years from now, and let's just say the stock runs back up to like, seven dollars right it's like oh yeah you, you're up you know 500 percent in change phenomenal however chances are if you go back and look instead of stepping in here at a dollar 20 and change you probably could have bought the damn thing for like 60 cents or something you know what i'm saying so you know i'd rather make a thousand percent than 500 percent and i'd rather also know that i'm buying this company that everyone counted out right that everyone forgot about now i'm buying it down at like sub one dollar dirt freaking cheap. I'm getting in near the bottom. And now at that point, I'm assuming, again, production is going to start to ramp up. The orders are going to start to come in. And then every single business headline moving forward, I'm going to benefit from because I got in right at the rock bottom when everyone else, you know what I mean, forgot about the company and counted them out. So that's how you should do these things. So obviously anyone who bought Mullen any time in the past is down significantly. But I wanted to look at this chart here with you guys because, again, the, the splits messed up my charts here. However, I had these top and bottom trend lines drawing out. Look looked like a symmetrical triangle or something. I, I don't recall exactly what we were speaking about last time. However, we had the triangle, and then, of course, as you can probably tell, it broke off that triangle. But this bottom trend line, interesting enough, I just extended this out to the right side, okay? Now, check this out. First of all, in, what is this, April, end of April. So in the last, like, three, four weeks, that's what I mean. See, uh, the, the stock begins to slide down, and it feels like the entire chart is in this descending wedge. And as we know, a descending wedge is technically a bullish pattern waiting for the stock to pop up and climb higher. The problem is it never happens because the company isn't doing anything. So at multiple times, you can say, oh, I could draw these highs, I could draw these lows, you know, we're seeing a pop here, that can happen. And it's, it's, just, it's just not worth trying to time because every day, every week, or every couple of weeks, the stock looks like it's lining up for these patterns. And then, you know, they announce something like this, and then nothing happens. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, th this is something that really doesn't have to be on your radar right now, in my opinion. And um, I, I just think it's only a matter of time before it continues to pull down and break through these fibs and hit new 52-week lows, and it, it's going to continue to slide here, even after all these splits and everything, it's going to continue to slide, in my opinion, down to a dollar and sub-dollar, uh, just because everyone and their brother is beating them up. Now, again, they do have some assets, right? No revenue coming in right now. Let's switch over to the financials quickly. The company was doing revenue. Honestly, I'm, you know, I, I really didn't even look into the, into the company. 
I, I, you know, I'm talking about like their past back in, you know, the last decade, honestly. I'm just being 100% honest because at the end of the day, as we can see, again, yes, I was right with my call, but more importantly, it's, it's common sense and simple logic, as I keep saying at, at some times. If you're telling me a company has a market cap of several billion and it's flying to the moon with all the stimulus money, and then I look up the stock and they're not doing any business, and that was what? 2020, 2021, the stock was really popular, and we looked it up together, and we saw that the company's not even going to be making cars like for years from then. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that, that's what I'm saying. There is no urgency. There is no money coming in, and in my opinion, there is no reason to own this right now. The PE, there is no earnings, so there is no PE. There are no sales, so there is no price to sales. There is no cash flow. There is no price to cash flow. Trading, incidentally, less than one times book value, which does kind of throw me for a loop. However, again, not the best metric I would use. Apparently back here, right, 2016, as we just saw, they were bringing in some revenue, supposedly, tens of millions or whatever it was, a couple of million bucks, and you can see here that they were trading just a third of their book value. So that's why I, I feel like investors and, and any players on Wall Street, like I really feel like they're not accepting this as an investment that they need to own or even an investment that they need to keep an eye on. Coincidentally, somehow the enterprise value is also here north of 210 million. And I think we just looked at the market cap as well, like 185 million. So you could say maybe it's trading at a little bit of a discount according to the enterprise value. However, in the last video I just did talking about NEO, I showed their enterprise value shot up from yeah, it was like 4 billion, 10 billion and then it jumped up to like 50, 40 billion just because the price of the stock went higher. So I understand the company does have some assets, but again, just nothing but negativity, nothing but bleeding, and I'm not seeing anything of urgency, and they supposedly got that order here for what, like 12,000 vehicles or something like that, that, you know, after all these years to finally get into production, as they say, and now supposedly they have an order coming in, like that's it, that that's like the one and only sole order, and it's only for like 10, 12,000 vehicles. I mean, I don't know, you know, in, in, to me, in my opinion, it's just not too impressive. The return on assets is dismal. Same thing with the equity, return on invested capital. There are none of these numbers at all. I mean, any way you dice it, I really don't see much value here aside from their assets, right? And as we see here, like I said, C2016, $54 million in revenue, cost of goods almost the same as that, and then the operating expenses brought them down negative, and at this time, as we just saw, the company was trading like a third of its book value. So that's why that price to book is not really a metric I would, I would look for here. It's costing them money when they're not bringing in any revenue. Pre-tax income minus $740 million. Switch over here to the balance sheet. And you can see you had a big explosion here in assets here moving into 2022. However, of course, the liabilities had to follow along with that because that's how probably how they were able to acquire said assets. So right now you got about a two to one ratio. So if you separate that again, that comes back to an equity here. You're looking at, again, the, the total equity is assets minus liabilities gives the total equity of the company. So let's say like 150 million in equity. So, you know, that, that's probably what the company's worth in my opinion. So you got 30 million lower potentially off of 180 is what one sixth, which is uh, what like seventeen? Is it seventeen? Oh no, sixteen point seven, right? Percent, I think, is one sixth. So that's probably how much further uh, this stock can drop. So that that's what I mean. They're probably going to bring it back down to a dollar and try to tease it to potentially even try to force it to get delisted off the Nasdaq. I'm I'm really not sure, but. I do think you can probably get this for like a dollar, a dollar two, a dollar four. I, I wouldn't even try to position myself here. Again, the book value somehow is a dollar seventy six. I'm I'm really not seeing that. But you know, if you want to say again, look, they, you know, holding seventy million in debt, you can even look at it this way too, right? You got seventy million in debt. Your equity is one hundred fifty. So you know, if you want to take the debt away from the equity as well. You can also say potentially the company is really only worth like $80 million, which of course would be like over a 50% decline from the current market cap of 180 plus million. 
which would drive the stock down to like 50, 55 cents. So that's why I'm saying I'm, I'm really not seeing any urgency here, and I'm not seeing anything positive either as well. Uh, I'm really not. You know, I'm glad I got the call right. If you were thinking about stepping in and you caught one of my videos and you said, you know what, let me give it some time, maybe this guy might be right, and it continued to sell off and, and you know, you had a sigh of relief, like, oof, thank goodness I didn't take that position, I'm, I'm glad I can help. I, I really am. However, again, even looking back at this, look, 21, 22, you know, they, they expected this company to start bringing in revenue here. So I, I just feel like it's a very lackluster position. The debt was up to 42 million. It's showing here in 20, uh, 40, yeah, 42 million back in 2021. Dropped down to sub 14 million in 22. That's good. Cash flow took a massive hit, even though they have 80 million in cash and cash equivalents apparently. But this, this is just, again, this, this is not something that I right now in this moment would be excited about. Let them beat the crap out of it. Let it find its absolute bottom. Let the company actually do some business and bring in some revenue to show it has value, to show it's developing a product that people are looking for, people are craving, people are lining up for. That's what grows a company. If, if there's no money coming in, it's really only worth the idea, the value of the idea is what we're valuing here, which of course is very you know difficult to value. And again, reverse splits is not helping the situation. I understand they want to maintain the NASDAQ listing. But again, I will say to reiterate before I let you guys go, it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. And I'm going to end it there. So once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down in the comments section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Just like everyone on YouTube says, like the video, thumbs up, algorithm helps me out. Subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me watching the community grow. If you have any questions, you want to join the Discord, talk about stocks, BS a little bit, I'm here. More importantly, moving forward, I understand that markets are rocky and volatile and uncertain. So I want to wish everyone success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. Catch you in the next bit.